Welcome to Dark Horizon Creations. I'm Mike. This time we're taking a look at the DC Multiverse Wonder Woman action figure by McFarlane Toys. Now if you haven't already, please follow, like, and subscribe to my social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so you get a notification of when I post new content. You know, when I first saw this action figure, I began to do research and I discovered that it was an original concept designed by Todd McFarlane himself for Wonder Woman. And I really liked the appearance of this figure. The moment I saw it, I knew I had to have it. It's a departure from the normal look that we associate with Wonder Woman in as much as she has a fully clothed and armored outfit. She's also wearing a headpiece that is very reminiscent of that worn by the Valkyrie of Norse mythology. She has shoulder armor, gauntlet armor, shin armor. Her boots are armored. Her shield has a totally unique split design, and she has a massive sword. I do like the colors that he chose to use, the red with the blue, as well as the gold, and then the silver trim. I think it all just pulls together nicely to give her a very regal and warrior-like appearance. That being said, there are some aspects of this action figure that I don't care for. First and foremost being the massive sword. You can see, even before I take the figure out of the box, that the sword itself is warped. And that's very disappointing because these action figures cost $20 a piece. And with the reputation that McFarlane Toys has for the quality of figures they produce, it's very disappointing to see an accessory included with these figures that is not of that same level of quality. And I hope that I can fix this sword by superheating it. I don't know that I'll be able to, but if not, I do have other swords from previous Wonder Woman action figures that I could substitute. The other aspect to her armor that I'm not a huge fan of are the spikes coming out of her shin armor. I really don't care for the way that they look. That's something that I might remove with either an X-Acto or a rotary tool and leave the shin armor intact. I also don't care for the spikes coming off of her shoulder armor either. Now, like all of the DC Multiverse figures, they are packaged in these very, very nice window display boxes. I've said this in previous reviews and I'll say it again. I think this is the nicest packaging for any action figure that I've ever seen. And I really like it because you can see everything that's included inside the box. The figure, the accessories, the display stand, the collector's card, everything is right there in front of you so that you can see it before you buy it. So down at the bottom, you have your DC Multiverse banner, Wonder Woman's name. On this side, you have the Wonder Woman banner designed by Todd McFarlane. And on the back, you have your obligatory product shots of the figure in an action pose, as well as some images of the other figures in this line down at the bottom. And here she is outside of the packaging. And as you can see, this is a really nice looking action figure. In my opinion, this is the best designed Wonder Woman action figure that we've ever gotten. It really is. It just takes the character to a whole other level. Now, before we begin the actual product review, I want to take a moment and show you guys the collector's card, which is included with this. It's mounted on the insert, and it's identical to the action figure pose that you see on the back of the packaging. So let's take a closer look at Wonder Woman. And, you know, I'm just amazed. You know, this is really, really nice. Up close, you can see the detail on the head sculpt. I like the fact that her eyes are even. I've seen Batgirl and her, her eyes are not. I have two of those actually. And you can see the design and her head piece there. And this is the soft kind of plasticky rubber design of her shoulder armor very ornate and you can see the spikes i don't really care for that i might leave those i might not her gauntlet armor very ornate 
You can see the stars molded in there. It also has these spikes. I think I'm gonna end up removing those. W for Wonder Woman here, a sash. And you can see her shin armor also ornately designed as well as her boots. And she does have the lasso of truth here. I like that that was included as well. So let's talk about articulation. So her head is very limited, but it does have a full range of articulation. It's just limited because of her hair. Forward and lateral movement at the shoulder and the shoulder armor does move, it pivots, it's soft material there. No bicep rotation. Double jointed elbow. And looks like no elbow rotation, but she does rotate at the forearm as well as at the wrist. And her wrist is also pivot. There you go. Torso's on a ball joint. Forward and lateral movement there at the thigh. Thigh rotation. Double jointed knee. And you can see that the knee armor covers that. I don't think she has lower leg rotation. Her foot is on a ball joint. It will pivot, and rotate. Toe, of course, pivots. So a full range of motion. And of course, she does include a display base to stand on. And here she is with her sword and shield. I got to tell you, if you don't think this looks cool, something's wrong because this is awesome. Because not only does she include the sword and shield, she also has her lasso of truth. That is awesome. This is the best looking Wonder Woman figure I have ever seen, hands down. I like this better than her traditional outfit. I really do. So let's take a look at the shield first. Up close, you can see how cool that looks. That is really awesome that he designed the shield with that split on either side. I think that looks incredible. It really does. It looks like something straight out of Greek mythology. That, that's the kind of thing that you would expect to see. And on the inside of it, you can see the leather straps. That looks really cool. I do like that. You can see the lasso of truth and it can come off of that. I don't want to take it off, but it's just coiled up. You can't extend it, but that's still cool that they included that. Here is the controversial aspect of this figure, the sword. And the reason I say controversial, because there's going to be a lot of collectors that if their sword is like mine, they're going to be disappointed. And there's a lot of warping on the sword. You can see the blade, how it curves down. From that perspective instead of remaining straight and from the lateral plane you can see how warped it is and this is after i heated it with a hair dryer to soften the material where i could try to straighten it and this isn't as warped as it was in the packaging this is better than it was but i don't know if i'm going to be able to restore this to its normal shape or not and if you aren't aware, one of the reasons why accessories such as this sword are like this is because during the manufacturing process, they pour the material into a metal mold and allow it to cool and then remove it and apply the paint apps to it. The issue is what it's made out of. It's made out of a different type of plastic than the rest of the action figure. Each section on these action figures have different plastic compositions. There are different types of plastic that they use for different parts. And unfortunately, these accessories are made out of that soft plastic material. I don't remember which one it is, 
but you know, it reminds me of the accessories that are included with the Jazzware Halo action figures and the G.I. Joe Classified Series figures. Uh, they're just crap. You know, some of the later ones in the Classified line have been made out of hard plastic, but not where they should be. The only thing that you can really do with this is to either boil hot water or use a hair dryer to superheat it. And what this does is it excites the molecules at a molecular level inside the material and causes them to expand. And that expansion is what makes the material malleable where you can change the shape of it. As it cools, those molecules begin to settle down and they become closer together and when that happens it settles on that particular shape so when you superheat this you're going to have to work with it and you know turn the various sections of it that seem to be warped and the best thing you can do is tape it down to a surface like this that is solid and leave it and i'll go so far as to recommend another method that you can use if you buy the craft and hobby sticks that are like popsicle sticks and put two of those on either side of the sword and clamp them together uh, with a little hobby clamp and leave it, that will cause it to set in place. And I think you'll find that that will help change the, the shape of the sword so that it is acceptable that it looks better than it does now. And you can see all the intricate designs in the sword and on her armor that would really benefit from a wash being applied to them. And I guarantee you that when you do that, it's going to make the action figure pop even more than it already does. She's going to really stand out. Overall, I have to say this is the best Wonder Woman figure that I've ever seen. It really is. I think that Todd McFarlane done an awesome job with this action figure. And I don't think we could ask for a nicer figure at this price point. I really do not. And I have not seen another manufacturer produce an action figure of this quality. If you don't have this figure in your collection, you definitely need to get it. I would advise you to buy two, one to keep in a box, one to take out and display. I guarantee you years from now, they're going to be talking about this action figure and it is going to be one of the most sought after Wonder Woman figures that have ever been produced. Ladies and gentlemen, there is the DC Multiverse Wonder Woman figure designed by Todd McFarlane.